Hello and welcome to Stats 2402 for Semester 2 2022. At the moment we are online because of all kinds of COVID issues, but from next week we hope to be face to face in the lectures and of course the lab start this week. So we'll start off by quickly looking over the unit outline and unit information. So this is Stats 2402. There are no prerequisites for this unit, but if you have done either of sets 1400 or 1520, or you may have done sets 2401 before this last semester, that will also be adequate. The book we'll be using for most of the work is the one that's called the Stats Sleuth by Ramsey and Schaefer. You'll find copies of this online in the library and also hard copies as well. If you can afford a copy and you will be doing if you are do, will be doing more stats units afterwards, it's worthwhile getting a copy of this book. It's a good book and uh, if you can own one that'll be great. This unit will be done in flip mode, which means that weekly I will pre-record lectures and put them on YouTube and put the links on the LMS announcements. So you should work through the PDF files of lecture notes that I, shall put, that I shall put on LMS along with the recordings. This way you will get a lot of the material before we get to face-to-face -face sessions. In the face-to-face -face sessions we'll answer any questions you will have and we'll also extend the work and look at practical cases and real cases or applications of the methods we are going to cover in this unit. This is very important because while everything might look good on paper and in textbooks, what actually happens in real life can be very different. So real data never behaves itself exactly as your modeling might suggest. Here we'll also take part in in-class discussions. This is also important because one of the most important things you will do throughout your life as employees or workers in any area is discussions with others, talks with others, explaining your thinking and also explaining your models and interpreting the models for others. Especially those who might not be so well versed in statistics as you might be. So it's very important to develop these skills. You can't develop this by sitting at home. So I really encourage you to come to class, attend the classes and take part in these sessions. The lab classes, as I say, start in week one. This is also important because here you'll get practical experience in applying the methods we've learned. You'll also have help available to you from our very experienced and knowledgeable facilitators. I might myself drop into some of the labs occasionally as I get time. But you'll find this is again another situation where you'll get time to talk with your colleagues, discuss ideas and bounce off ideas of each other as well and learn from each other as well. The labs do start in week one, and every week on Thursdays I shall put on an online quiz on LMS. They'll be available on Thursdays a little late in the week, so that all, or at least most of you, would have done your lab classes by that stage. The quizzes will be based on lab material and lecture material, and they aren't meant to be very difficult, but they are meant to encourage you to finish and complete your work. They are worth 3% each, so 12 of them makes 36%, and that's a fairly large part of assessment. So again, I encourage you to do this yourselves and learn as you go along. Now, as I've said here in the morning, material actually moves quite fast here. You're in second year now, so you'll find things will go fast. If you don't keep up to date week by week, you will fall behind. And as in any unit, especially mathematics and statistics, once you fall behind, anything from there on doesn't make any sense. So please stay up to date. I'll let you go through the learning outcomes yourself. I want to go and focus a little bit on the lecture schedule. This is proposed. This may change depending on how fast or how slowly we cover things. <clears throat> so the first thing we'll do is we'll cover the regression of what's called the linear statistical model the very important model here. Almost all models we deal with are linear in many situations and that makes it easy as well for model fitting and model interpretation. We'll spend two weeks over this because we will cover the things like R and R Studio and ggplot and those kinds of things that makes your life easier. We'll also cover the things to do with R Markdown as you'll see later on here. R Studio, R Markdown. This also makes our life very much easier. So we'll cover all these things. 
in two weeks, so we'll have time here. I'm not going to rush through this. And the rest of the thing you can look at as we go through here. The main things here I want to focus on is that you do have two assignments. Now, the first assignment is actually due in just after the break, after week six, when we've covered enough material. But of course, the first assessments you'll see are the weekly quizzes. And the second assignment is due at the end of week 11. I've made them due on Sunday, so those who may be working over the week might then be able to spend time on the weekend to cover these. The other assessment is going to be the exam. So 36% for the 12 weekly quizzes, 10% for the first assignment, and 14 for the next, because the second assignment will cover more material and be a bit more advanced, so it's worth a bit more. And the final exam is 40%. Now, all the assessments here essentially are online. Take home if you like. So the quiz is essentially online. You can do it yourself. And the assignments are on, will be submitted online as well. And the final exam is going to be a take home exam. <coughs> open book, open internet, open everything. The only thing that you shouldn't do in the exam is consult with another student or another person. So other than that, it's a real life situation where if you're given a project, you'll be looking at all available resources to you and using them. And this is the same with the exam. Now the exam will actually be therefore in a different format and we shall discuss this as we go through here. As it says here it's an open book and we'll get more details of this as we go through. Now, regarding the assignments also, they'll be of a different format than you might be used to, but we'll cover all those as we go through. One of the most important things with data analysis and data science and statistics is being able to write things for an audience. So we'll cover this again in lectures and discuss how you write things, what you write, what you don't write, and those kinds of things as we go through. So that's enough of this uh, unit outline. <coughs> Let's get to a bit of, of some things to do with R. So here is my R. It's easy in one sense. All you need to do is go to the appropriate website. So you can search, for example, for R download and you'll find R here. If you go to the website, you can simply select and download the version of R you need. So what you need here is Windows if you have Windows or Mac if you want Mac. Then essentially it's a matter of downloading this. And once you've downloaded this, open this and it will take through through the installation fairly naturally. Nothing too difficult there. The other thing that's of interest to us is our studio. And if you go to our studio over here, again, the same thing. Simply download and install. It will link itself to our automatically. Again, just install as, as naturally. You'll find everything works fairly well over here. So this R and R studio will cover R as we go through in these lectures today, and we'll cover more as we go through later on. Now, let's get to the lectures, and we'll get to R afterwards a little bit. So, this is analysis or observations. Essentially, that's not a nice title. It's not a very uh, descriptive title. What it should really be is about discrete data. So we're looking here at what we call discrete data. We're looking at data that is not continuous, but may be dichotomous, binary for example, 0, 1, yes, no, true, false. And the other is what we call count data, the number of occurrences of something, the number of cars queued up, for example, at a traffic light, the number of errors in a piece of uh, work like a, a document of this kind. So that's the other situation we look at. So those kinds of data are what we're looking at here. So we are looking here not just at the data itself, but the effect on those data of other core videos. So for example, I might want to see what is the number the number of cars banked up at a traffic light at different times in the day and different days of the week. More generally, this is the kind of thing we call it generalized linear models, where we will see what the difference between this is and what we'll be doing today in our regression analysis. So that's what we're looking at in this, in this particular unit. Discrete data of these kinds. Basic idea here is that you'll know and understand the fundamental concepts in probability statistics through this unit. You'll apply them to real world problems. So I'm not going to look at just textbook data over here. We'll be looking at data that I pick up from my own research or other research, or other papers as well. 
So we're looking at the research kind of articles, research papers. This is where the real work is going to be. We'll be using computer packages for fitting models. No point just knowing what the models are all about. You need to fit them, and you've got to communicate the results of this to others. So this is one of the most important parts of the work. Be able to analyze and communicate the results effectively to people who might not be statisticians or might not be very well, well versed in statistics. So we'll see how this works out as we do uh, go through the unit over the weeks. Now, it's nice if you have a bit more math mathematics here, but advanced math is not assumed. If you've done some uh, probability theory earlier, either in high school or through other units that will be really useful. If you have done some what we call Gaussian or linear regression, that's also going to be useful. Otherwise, we'll cover this in the first two weeks. If you've got some experience with expon exponential functions and log logarithms, that's also useful. And if you have some basic calculus, the idea of, for example, finding maxima and minima, that'll be also useful. If you don't have any of this, you can still pass, and in fact, you can still do well at this unit. And we will cover the methods we go through rather gently, but uh, I would, must stress that a lot of the maths will not be assessed, although understanding of some of the maths will be required in inter interpreting the models we will build. We've covered reading material. You've got a whole pile of books over here to look at. As I said earlier, the textbook we'll be using throughout is going to be the one by Ramsey and Schaefer, this one here. Uh, you'll find this in high demand. You'll find this online, so you can read this online. You should refer to this as we go through the course. For the first half of the weeks, for the first of two weeks, we'll be covering essentially the regression. And here is the outlines for first weeks 3 to 8, it'll be chapters 18, 20, 21, 22. And then afterwards, we'll be covering negative binomial and zero inflated fossil regression as well. And then we'll do more with the theoretical aspects of this model estimation, parameter estimation, those kinds of things in the last two or so weeks. Again, there's a lot more material here in the lecture notes than we'll cover, but we'll see how this works as we go through here. So, let's stop this lecture here, and we'll take this up in the second lecture. Thank you. Bye.